Lost Tom. All right. Um, first, I want to thank our fans, and uh, I was I was really upset last game, uh, more because like our fans did such a great job, and I felt as a coach like I didn't have my team ready, and uh, and so today to see our guys put that kind of effort out for 40 minutes, it showed um, how much they really uh, appreciated. Uh, our fans and what they bring to the table uh, for us. And because that this doesn't happen everywhere, right? Like we can't take this thing for granted. And so um, secondly, I, I'm, I say this all the time, wins and losses, but I, I really, really mean, I, I'm so blessed by God uh, to be the head coach here at Kansas State. And uh, I, I, I don't, I mean, I, I don't take it lightly. And to be able to work with these young men every day in this great environment, with such wonderful people, I, I'm I'm extremely blessed, very very thankful to Coach uh, to to Gene Taylor and um, President Linton for giving me this opportunity. Your players mentioned a lot of uh, circle the wagon rebound drill uh, in the past few days, to kind of having that instant rebounding success success tonight. How exciting is that? Well, I I'm really glad that they got the point right. Like um, I am. I am probably by nature um, a jackal, right? Like I, I don't mind being like the bad guy and I could do it every single day and it wouldn't bother me at one bit, right? But it wouldn't be very fun for them and my staff wouldn't like me very much, right? So you hope that you have older guys and guys who understand the importance of, um, you know, like, like, it, like that drive comes from within the locker room rather than from the coaching staff. But I just really felt like they needed that from from me. And so everybody up and down the hallway in the offices and in the locker room and in the gym and in the film room, everybody was on eggshells these last few days on purpose because there needed to be a heightened um, sense of urgency. Uh, and so, yes, we did circle the wagon rebounding. We did a lot of, of things that um, maybe, um, you know, you might not do on, on a quick turnaround and stuff, but uh, the, the message had to be sent and the guys received it. And now the, the hope is that on Thursday when we come back that I'm not the one that has to drive it, like the players are the ones that drive it. Marquis set the single season assist record. Um, what, what about what he's done this season in, in that aspect of his game has been so special? Well, man, anytime you um, you do a like an all-time record, like you know the the most in the history, that's a really big deal. And Steve Henson is a really big deal uh, around here. And the guys that Steve Henson played with were really good players, right? And so it says two things. First of all, Keith was blessed with vision, and he has a willingness to to pass the ball. And secondly, he has some really good players around him too, because they're putting it in the hole. So it, it says a, a a lot about him, and a lot about our team. And so it's a great honor, man. I I mean, I, I'm proud of the kid and that, that young fella. He took he took the the last loss really hard, and I was proud of how he responded today. And then, Tyke had a had a great game. Seemed like a kind of a long time coming for him to kind of come out and, and yeah, play you know, um, we tell everybody that at some point in time during the season, everybody on the team is going to have an opportunity to help us win a game. And, you know, Taiki came to my office and he said, Coach, man, is there anything that I could do to just to help? I said, he said, Coach, whether you want me to play defense on the other team's best player, or not let them touch the ball, whatever it is, I just want to be able to help contribute to our team winning, right? And I, I told him, I said, Co you know, we was trying to figure it out. Like, we're, we're working through some things. It's not something you're not doing. It's just, you know, we're just trying to figure out how to, like, get the most out of each guy. And all I asked him, I said, just just stay ready for me. Just just stay ready. And if you stay ready, your opportunity is going to come. And tonight his opportunity came, and he was ready. Coach, between Desi and Ty Key, you know, how important can that bench production be moving forward, and how do you find that on a consistent basis? Yeah, that's that's the key, right? Like every coach, like you know what coaches want 
there's consistency. Like you don't want 25 points one night and two the next. You just want to know what you're going to get. And so, um, but I'm sure players want to know they're going to play a certain amount of minutes every night also. And so we have to find that balance. But if we can get the production from Desi and Taiki off the bench like that, it, it <coughs> makes us a, a, a much better team and harder to guard. And so um, we're going to keep trying to figure this thing out. Keontae ends up with 14 points. Uh, if I recall correctly, his three fouls were all going to the hoop. Um, Chargers. Um, and uh, he had six turnovers. Is, is he kind of over-penetrating, trying to force it a little bit at times? Uh, I don't know if it's that he's trying to force. I think teams are loading up on him, like just like you know what they're doing with Keese on the ball screen. Everybody's uh, like presenting something different. And so what we have to do as a staff is figure out a way to get him isolated so where the help is not there. And the second thing is to show him on film. Uh, like there was a couple times he could have stopped a little early and delivered a pass to someone else who was open. And so we have to show him on film because he's a willing passer mm -hmm. and, and show him how he can like then be a facilitator and we can eliminate some of those turnovers. How much was your run keep by the defense? I think you got four straight stops and five out of six during one stretch. Yeah, no, it was it was all defense, right? Like, I mean, um, you have a, a when you early leads. I always say early leads mean nothing unless you defend and rebound. And I thought in the second half, um, other than that, to start the second half when they went on that little spurt, I thought um, our goal was to win every media. I thought we did, except for one. I think we tied, and so. But it was just about it's zero zero, and we got to defend and we got to rebound. And because, I mean, last game, remember they had 54 points in the paint and 36 uh, fast break points and 26 points off our turnovers, and they just killed us on the glass. And so, you know, those are just, I mean, we, we it was an emphasis for us, and our guys are really bought into it. And they made a similar run to what Texas did in the second half. Yeah. Kind of at the same point. Was this the kind of response that you were, you've been looking for? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think I did a better job and called a timeout this time. And uh, so the staff, you know, we, we, we figured that part out. And, uh, and then the guys, yeah, they, they did, did respond to it better. Coach, last time you guys played TCU, Eddie Lampkin, I think, went for 17 and 6. I know he's a little hobbled by injuries now, but he gets one rebound with uh, no points, just what you guys do differently? No, th yeah. this is not the same TCU team that we played at their place, right? Ed Eddie's hurt and Mike didn't play, okay? Um, th they, I, I told them that, because I know, I've known Mike since he was maybe fifth grade, you know, and, and Eddie for a really long time, eighth grader, you know, and so it's, um, I, I think when they're all healthy, they may be the best team in, in the league. And they got it, they have all the pieces that they could make win six games in the tournament, right? And so this was not the same team. They're still really good without those guys, and I'm not trying to. I'm not taking away anything from what we did tonight, but it's just not the same team right now. And then I want to ask you about Desi. Um, he had 24 points against Kansas the first time you guys played, and then I think he didn't score for a game or two. Now he's finally started to pick up the production points-wise. I mean, just how much does he change the offense when he is able to score? Well, you know, when he's playing downhill and he's being aggressive, he, he really helps us. And um, I, I, once again, I think it just, we were trying to figure out some consistency here. And th that's where, like, it's tough when you get 24 one game and you get zero the next, right? Like, as a coach, you're like, now what can I, what can I, which Desi am I getting tonight? And I'd rather take the 14, you know, and I think six rebounds maybe um, that he had. You know, I, I take that Desi every night rather than the 24 and then the zero. Coach, when you've got the production that um, Taiki produ provides, like what does he have to do to do that consistently and w how does that continue? Well, I think one of the things uh, is like what what role – will you be happy with, right? And um, the fact that he came in my office and said, Coach, I just want to help, then now you know you're not worried about, well, do I need – because he was a guard at Stony Brook last year, right? And But um, for us today, I mean, he was playing the four and he was in the dunker spot, and he does that pretty well, by the way. Um, you know, and 
so you know it's just about buying into your role and if if you do that then then you add value right coach bebe takes two charges in the first half i know he doesn't always have the biggest impact scoring wise but energy wise he seemed to be impactful tonight can you describe what you saw from him i saw him fight in the post not give up post touches because he was fronting and then box out and that that's what we needed because at their place they just owned the paint and uh, i was very impressed with bebe's energy and other than the one time we were in the the press and he came running up and gave up the dunk at the rim i thought he was pretty locked in what do you think kind of led to him making those kind of strides and making that kind of impact tonight well at tcu um i thought eddie got in his head and i mean he was just like eddie has that ability right uh to score and then tell you about it and you know he got the crowd going and I thought Eddie got in his head, and so we. we uh, I thought today he was more focused on what he needed to do. As a role man, what does David do so well, and how can he, or what makes him so effective as a cutter in, in that role as well? Because he, he's quick, right? So he can get in and out of his, the, the screens quick, and that um, helps him. Uh, and then he can catch the ball and finish. And so um, we just got to get him to continue to set screens and not not slip out of them. I think the, the game down there, uh, you guys had 14 turnovers in the first half. And <coughs> this time, you forced 13, I think, in the first half. And I think they only had 10 the whole game down there. What was, what was the difference defensively, do you think? I don't know if it was um, as much defensively as Mike Miles is not out there. You know what I mean? like. It's, you, you're not going to be able to pressure Mike as high up the floor as we were able to do the other guards. Um, he's because he can just go by you and, and make plays. And so I, I think it was more about what they were lacking than maybe something we were doing. But also the fact that you guys didn't turn it over as much, especially early. When well, yeah, if we don't yeah. turn the ball over, we got a chance. Like, I mean, because we're pretty good offensively. and But when we turn the ball over and they're out in transition, there's, I mean, there's no defense for that. You've talked about Taj and what he does in practice before, but Ty Key brought him up without even being asked about him as a guy in practice that's really helped even Ty Key get better. Uh, what do you think he's going to bring to K-State for the future? I think at some point in time, Taj Manning's going to be an all-conference player, and uh, he's going to help us win a ton of basketball games. And... Uh, he, every year, he's just going to continue to get better and better. And um, one day, y'all will be sitting here writing stories about, you know, maybe the all-time winningest player in K-State history because he does all the little things and big things that help you win basketball games. And he is – nobody likes to see him at practice, <laughs> okay? And nobody likes to no, – no, nobody wants them him guarding him. And every day at practice, he says – Keontae Johnson, I'm going to guard you. And it doesn't matter how ticked off Keontae is about how physical he is with himself, he does it every single time. And he just figures out. And, and every time he goes to the glass. And, and I'm he's, uh, our scout team is really good, is really good. And uh, they, they really help us prepare. And um, I leave practice a lot of times thinking, boy, we're going to be pretty good next year. Coach, there can be a thousand different thoughts running through your head after after a game. You go up with the uh, pet band after the game. Take me back to that moment. What's running through your head at that moment? Well, the last time I got to go up, I, like I picked a different section, and but the, our band. I mean, like you ever been out to watch their practice? Like, I mean, they get after it, right? Like, I mean, it is. They work. Right, and I mean, and they bring the energy, and and I didn't even know they did all the stuff with the the horns and stuff when they were doing the wabash. Like they go different directions and up and down, and, and I mean, they it's like choreographed, like like special. And so I got to see that, but I really just appreciate our band being at the game. I appreciate the way they embraced us when we went out to see them, and and uh, you know, I, I want I, I would like every group to know how much I, I appreciate what they bring to the table and how much they help make this environment, uh, which it'll be the best in college basketball. 
So <clears throat> if the team saw angry Jerome Tang this weekend at practice, I'm just wondering how many times have you had to break that version of yourself out this season? Uh, well, it's during Shark Week. They saw, like, a different me. But that was the conditioning week, and it was like, hey, this is business. I think in this day and age with, with our, the young people, the way they are, like, you can't, you can't do this. Like, the kids want consistency, right? They want to know to come in, they're going to get the same thing every day. When you come in, and one day you're happy, and one day you're the, and stuff like that, it screws with them, right? So I could probably do this about three times a year for this group. And because if you do it too much, you lose them. They stop listening to you. Right, and so, um, you know, I, I hope I don't have to, but if I have to do it two more times, that's probably about till they'll like start tuning me out. So that was number one this week. Yeah, this was no yeah. Shark Week was just what it needed to be. This was the first time all year long. Coach, sure, another Big 12 televised game, there was an announcer said something like, every night in the Big 12, there's a desperate team. There's a team that's trying to avoid a losing streak, a team that's trying to protect home court, a team that's trying to maintain status in the standings. Every night, there's a desperate team in the league. How do you maintain the edge? Because there may have been some desperation tonight. You didn't want to lose three in a row, lose four in a row in the conference. How do you maintain that edge here down the stretch and be, if not desperate, then, then be that team that has that competitive edge on a night-in, night-out basis? Man, if, if I had the answer to that, I, I would be a multimillionaire right now. Like, like that's the thing. Like, su success has a way of making people relax. And, um, and it, it, it takes away a little bit of your edge. It, it, it just, it's just human nature, right? And so to fight human nature, uh, that, that's our job as coaches to try and figure this out. And what I'm hoping is that our, our guys – our, our older guys come back and don't allow it. Like, don't make me have to be, because I don't mind, like I said, but, but they be the ones that hold each other accountable to compete at a certain level and have an edge. Because really, we were picked to finish last in the league, okay? I, we could still finish last in the league, right? So we haven't accomplished anything, right? I, I mean, I'm a first year head coach. People like looked at my staff and said, we can't coach. Right. And so, I mean, nothing's changed. Right. And, and the reason why we we're successful early is because we played with love and joy and with a chip on our shoulder. And so nothing should change. And so my job is to make sure that nothing changes. And I'm hoping that it can come from inside the locker room rather than from outside the locker room. But if I had the answer to that, like I said, I'd be. Yeah, I'd, I'd be doing something different. <laughs> so speaking of Shark Week, you guys had the word grit. Yeah. Which meant greatness really is tough. It is. Is the last couple of weeks what you've been talking about? Is that what you meant? Yeah, you know, just. But, you know, like this, it's probably been coming and, and you try to figure out how to. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, man. And you look around the league and, and it's tough. Teams win a couple of games and people think they're on a roll. And, and then all of a sudden. Like the, the dudes we play against, the teams we play against are really, really good, right? And then you go into their environment to play, and or they're coming to ours, and uh, yeah, it's 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 tough. It is really tough, and so you know you just gotta, you, like I said, it, it, you you hope that your your upperclassmen can uh, can really help you in those areas. Hey, thank you guys. Go Cats.